trial before the Jews. It was around 8 o'clock when Jesus took his disciples and went to the Garden of Gethsemane. The soldiers came shortly after midnight. Now there were, there were between five and six hundred men among those soldiers. Part of the group were Roman soldiers and the other part were temple guards. Now the Roman soldiers weren't there to get Jesus. That wasn't their job. They were there to keep the peace in case there was some, some kind of a riot. Still and all, you get the picture that when Peter drew his sword and waded into the crowd, I mean, there was a big amount of soldiers there. Whatever you say about Peter, he was not a coward. Now, you've got to picture it. When they come out of the Garden of Gethsemane, right across the valley is the Eastern Gates. They turn south and go down along the, the city walls until they come to the, the gate that leads them into the lower city. They make their way a, across the lower part, right next to where the upper room was at, to the house of Caiaphas. Uh, Jesus first meets with the, uh, the former high priest. And now, now, now uh, Annas hadn't been hadn't been a priest for over 15 years. Still, the people called him high priest. There's, there's a reason for that. When Moses set up the order, uh, a high priest was selected, and that was a lifetime responsibility. He was high priest until he died. But when the Romans came along, they appointed high priests. It wasn't just a religious job, but it was also a political job. And, and, and they changed often. It, matter of fact, between Herod the Great and when the uh, city was destroyed in 70 AD, there were, there were 28 high priests during, during, during that time. Still, the people held to what Moses had. They held that you're a high priest, you were that for life. So they would still refer to Annas as a, as a high priest. When we, when we take people to the Bible telling seminar in Israel, we take them to the house of Caiaphas. And you have to picture it, that, that, that uh, when Jesus left the balcony that overlooked the courtyard, they had a bit of night left before, before the sun came up. So they took him down, 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 way down to the dungeon that was underneath the house. And that's where Jesus was kept. It, it, if he fell asleep at all that night, that's where he slept. We take people down there. We go to that very dungeon area, and it's quite a moving experience being there where Jesus was, was held prisoner. You have to remember, the Jews were violating all kinds of their own laws here. It was not legal. It was not legal according to Jewish law to try anyone at night. And especially so, so quickly. On top of that, all this is happening during the day of preparation. All of these, all of these priests and all these men should well have been occupied for the entire day getting ready for the Passover. No, they, they, uh, this was, they, they were desperate to get Jesus. and They were violating all kinds of rules. When it said that uh, Peter cursed... Now, he wasn't just saying a few cuss words here, bad as that would be. No, no, no. He was evoking God to judge him if he was telling a lie. He was, he was using God's name in this. And it was then that he heard the rooster crow. Well, this is only half the story as far as the trial is concerned. Uh, he is tried by the Jews, and then next he's tried by the Romans. So come back when we give you story insights on, a, on the trial by the Romans.